Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. In today's video, I'm going to try to answer once and for all the question that I get more than any other questions. And that is, what happens when I trip the limit switch and my machine stops? How do I get it to move again? That is probably the number one question that I get in all of the questions across the board. So today, let's get involved in how to answer it. I want to thank all of my Patreons for helping to support this channel. And if you'd like to participate, please go to patreon.com slash Workshop. Now to do this demonstration, I'm going to be using the Box Alien Basto. Now this is still similar to any other machine. It doesn't matter if you're using the Box Alien, the X-Carve, Open Builds, uh, the New Carve. All of them have limit switches and all of them function the same way. Now for the software that I'm going to use today, I'm going to go ahead and use the Open Builds. But again, as far as the software, the Universal G-Code Sender, or UGS, works the same way. I have the computer on and the CNC machine on, so I'm going to click the Open Builds control software and open it up. Once this happens, I need to connect the machine to the software. And it happens instantly. I have now connected it, and you see this alarm flashing that is going to unlock the machine so that I can move it. Because at this point, nothing moves. I can click on this, control buttons, nothing moves. I have to unlock the alarm to begin with. Once I do that, then everything is going to be able to move. Now I'm going to move the control so it'll move at one inch increments. And then I'm going to click on the x-axis and you can see it moves left and right y-axis, forward and back, and I can even use the z-axis and move it up or down just as easily. Now I have not homed the machine yet at all. All I've done is turn it on and connected the software to it. So next, let's go ahead and home the machine. Right up here at the top of the screen, there's a home all. And at this point, it is gonna move up on the z-axis and hit the limit switch. Now that stops the z-axis. Now it continues to move and it will do the same thing with the x-axis and it's very subtle, it's a small change. But it stops on the x-axis, now it's moving down the y-axis and it hits that limit switch. Now the machine is actually homed, but you can still now move it. Why? Because it is in the homing cycle and that's how the program works. So at this point, I can move it anywhere that I wish. Now that is different than when these limit switches are actually tripped. I wanna show you the homing cycle again. As this moves up, look how it trips it and then it backs up. It releases that switch. Let me show this to you one more time. It's moving down, it trips the switch, it stops, but it's designed to back up and release the switch. And that way, you can continue to move the machine anywhere that you want. Now at this point, I have this less than an inch from the switch, and now we're gonna actually trip the limit switch. So I'm gonna click the Z axis, it's gonna move up, it hits it, and that switch has now been activated and it's not moving, so that is now off. And at this point, you see the alarm code. It says unlock the alarm. Because at this point, nothing moves in any direction. Now I unlock the alarm, and now I click down for the z-axis. It's going to attempt to move down, but you see that? I get the alarm code again. So let's see that again. I hit the up on the z-axis, I get this alarm code, and the machine has been stopped. So at this point, the alarm is stripped, and it says unlock the alarm. So when I unlock it and I go down, what's actually happening? Did you see it? It moved down, but only a tiny bit, and it locked again. The reason being, it was not able to move down far enough to be able to release that switch so that it would be able to be free to move again. So after seeing that in actual reality in real time, it may be necessary to be able to unlock the machine Go ahead and click on the z-axis to move down. It may stop a second time or a third time. It will do that until it has moved down enough to be able to release that limit switch so that it will be free to move again. And I think that is one of the biggest problems that people have. They don't even see that it moved down ever so slightly. 
Have you ever really looked at the limit switch? There's three different connectors. You have a common, which is usually separated further than the other two, and then normally closed, and then normally open. Now, any time that this is tripped, or the machine does it, or you do it by accident, that is going to stop the machine. And you can see on the control screen that it says unlock the alarm. And the machine wasn't even moving when that alarm was tripped. I was the one that pushed a button. So by unlocking it, then I can move the machine again because that switch is no longer pressed down. And you can see just how little pressure that it needs to activate that switch. And by doing that a second time, it tripped the alarm. So I need to click unlock the alarm and now it will move. So now that we've talked about that, let's look at the emergency stop. This is another area that gives people just tons of problems because it's not as obvious. But if you push that down, that will stop the machine. It will not move in any direction at all. It literally shuts all power off to the machine. And the interesting thing about that is when you look at the computer screen, it does not have an unlock alarm and that causes the problem because you can't see and easily identify what's causing the issue. Now look at the arrows on top. You have to twist this knob for it to be able to come up. And if you don't turn it all the way, it's not going to fully disengage and come fully up. And when you do that, then you'll see the alarm, unlock it, and now you're back in business and you'll be able to move the machine. Oftentimes in the shipping, that this switch will get depressed and you won't even know it. So you'll be able to put the whole machine together and wonder why it's not working. Well, this would be the first thing that I would check. Make sure that this emergency stop is disengaged and it's fully in the upright position. And you can do that simply by looking at that uh, knob and turning it in the direction of the arrows. And you may have to do this once or twice just to make sure that you have it verified. You notice when you hit the emergency stop, nothing happened on the computer screen at all. So oftentimes you will not realize that the emergency stop has been pushed. Now, one of the things you want to consider is when you first open up the box and put the machine together, there's a good chance that that emergency stop button is going to be pushed down. So you have to be able to make sure that it's been released and it's in that upward position. Micro switches are not complicated. There's just simply a switch and there's usually three different connectors on there. One connector is called the common, and it's gonna be separated a little bit further away from the other two. The other two connectors are NC and NO, which means normally open or normally closed. For the CNC machines, the vast majority of them operate where the uh, limit switches are set up on a normally open situation meaning that that circuit is open. So when that switch is pushed or that little lever or button, whatever the case may be, is pushed down, it creates the circuit and it stops the machine instantly. And it doesn't matter, as you could see, I can push the switch and it turns it off. The machine doesn't even have to be near it. So these are the things that actually can happen. And then you're wondering what is wrong with the machine I'm nowhere near the limit switches, but yet it's tripped. All it takes is a very slight pressure to be able to push that switch in and it will stop the machine. Thank you for watching today. I know this was a very short, quick video, but I hope that I was successfully able to answer the questions that has plagued so many people. The limit switches are not a big mystery, but they can cause a lot of havoc. And hopefully this short video has helped solve that mystery. In addition, I wanted to cover and touch the emergency stop button because that one also has created a lot of problems for many, many people. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And this is one video, share it with everybody as you know, because this question is out there for so many people and they needs to be answered. And by the way, while you're down there, click on that little subscribe button and the notification so that you'll be reminded of the different videos that I upload. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you in the shop. Bye-bye.